Could I just start by welcoming the announcement, if I may, by Mylan of 220 jobs in the Gaeltacht in Connemara, and to say that I think that this is a testament to the hard work that is being done by this government in spite of the awful economic morass that we find ourselves in as a result of the last speaker's government's actions, and to say that in spite of that economic morass that we find ourselves in, that we are still winning new business, we are still winning new investments, and we are, in spite of the economic constraints, sending out signals to the business community that Ireland is open business, and that we are, against the head, uh, doing our very best to restore that economic sovereignty that was lost, uh, lost through the actions of the previous speaker and the government of which he was a cabinet member. And let it be said for the record of this House and for any historical purposes that Deputy O'Keeve was a cabinet minister in the last government that brought this country to its knees, Akion Korla, to its knees. And when I listen to the re revisionist rubbish coming from that gentleman's mouth, it would make the hair stand on the back of one's neck. It is an absolute disgrace that anybody who was a cabinet minister in the last government would come in here and seek to lecture any other member on this side of the House about where we are going wrong or where he perceives that we are going wrong in terms of the path that we are on to try and restore our economic sovereignty. And let me also say that when I listen to his words, I have to say that they are quite confused and I did not understand one iota of what he was saying because he did contradict himself when he says that nobody understands this treaty and then he says in another sentence that a treaty doesn't go far enough contradictory verbiage and I think it was time that he was called on the bluff and the bluster that we have heard from him these past few months. I think it behoves us as parliamentarians to speak responsibly when we come into this House. Yes, we are all prone to oratorical flourishes. Myself, I don't exclude myself from that process, but I think we do endeavour to speak the truth. Akion Korla, Ratification of this treaty is fundamental to Ireland's recovery. The instability that has plagued the euro has been a destabilising feature of the EU polity and one which has, been diminished, uh, has diminished our stature as a continent in hegemonic terms. The euro is our currency, it is Ireland's currency, and the treaty is about bringing stability to the entire eurozone. As a small open economy, subject to the vagaries of global economic shifts, Ireland's national interest is best served by our continuation as members of this currency. Irish ratification would further enhance growing international confidence in our ongoing recovery. We are on target to reduce our budget deficit to under 3% by 2015, and our exports are growing strongly. Nobody would claim that the treaty is the sole answer to Europe's economic problems, but it is a crucial part of a wider package of necessary measures. The treaty has to be accompanied by more action to achieve growth and jobs, particularly at EU level. Membership of a strong, stable euro is vital for the development of our economy. Achieving an actual European investment programme for growth and jobs should be a European aspiration and one that is best served by cooperation with our Eurozone partners. Just today, and I reiterate, Milan Incorporated announced more than 220 new positions to their existing operations in Ireland. It is incumbent on us to ensure that investments such as this continue into the future. Ratification of this treaty will help to ensure that Ireland is seen as a safe place to do business. Any claim that rejecting the treaty will mean no more difficult decisions are required is patently false and disingenuous. There have been claims from members of the opposition that this treaty will lead to further austerity and hardship for the Irish people. To those that call this an austerity treaty, I say this to create a narrative that implicitly suggests that voting no means ending fiscal consolidation is a falsehood. 
The simple fact is that we, as a sovereign government, have to stabilise our public finances. That is a moral imperative, Akeon Korla. It is a moral imperative to ensure that future generations are left a half-decent legacy within which to live. A debt-GDP ratio of more than 90% damages growth, and Ireland's debt-GDP ratio is expected to peak at about 118% this year. We take in just €7 million Euro for each €10 million spent. We borrow €44 million daily in order to run the country. That's equivalent to France borrowing almost €600 million a day. This simply isn't sustainable, and we cannot afford to leave that burden to future generations. In Ireland's case, the Stability Treaty requires us to do no more than we're already doing at present to rebalance the public finances. The treaty does not prevent investment. What it does is to ensure that we have sustainable finances, balanced budgets, or budgets in surplus in good times, and no unsustainable deficits in recessionary times. Investment is perfectly possible in these circumstances. And that is a classical Keynesian theory. And Keynes' theory has been misinterpreted by some to suit some political narratives. Keynes is not simply about stimulus packages that never need to be paid for. Economist Seamus Coffey of UCC recently said that had the treaty and the wider package of measures now been considered through closer macroeconomic surveillance, if that system had been in place over the past decade, Ireland's economic crash would probably have been less severe and we probably would not have needed a bailout in 2010. Those who oppose this treaty in Ireland never say where Ireland will get the funding for a stimulus package. They only offer slogans about taxing the rich, yet refuse to back initiatives such as a property tax. They think that government borrowings do not have to be paid back and that there are no negative consequences to defaulting. There have also been questions around why Ireland needs access to the European Stability Mechanism if the intention is to return to the markets next year. This government has every intention of returning to the international lending markets next year. The existence of the ESM will actually make this process easier. The ESM is a safety net and will mean that we will be in a better bargaining position when we are looking for market funding. This treaty at Keon Corla will come into effect when 12 Eurozone countries ratify it by the 1st of January 2013 or earlier. Unlike previous EU treaties, Ireland does not have a veto over this treaty. The only people affected by an Irish no would be the Irish people themselves. Deciding not to ratify this treaty would make Ireland's economic recovery more difficult by crucially denying us future access to the ESM. We are working to ensure that no second bailout will be necessary, but the very fact of not having the insurance policy of ESM access could undermine international confidence in our recovery. The Irish Labour Party has long argued that fiscal consolidation has to go hand in hand with growth and that one will not and cannot work without the other. And that is why we are, with our colleagues in government, continually pressing for more growth initiatives in Europe. Thank you.